In this video, we're looking at a liquid flowing through a pipe that has changing diameter, and we want to figure out how the speed of the liquid must change. The result of this calculation is called the continuity equation for fluid dynamics. Now, this result rests on an important assumption, and the assumption is that the, the fluid in the pipe, a liquid in this case, is nearly incompressible. So I went ahead and said liquid there. Liquid is a type of fluid. Um, so it was a gas, but gases are highly compressible, so we wouldn't try this with a gas. Now, it's actually important that in real life, liquids are compressible, but they're incredibly hard to compress. So really more accurately here, I should say nearly incompressible. All right, we need a new concept here in order to make the continuity equation make the most sense. And the concept is called flow rate. And I like to use a little f for that. And all flow rate is, is the volume of the fluid per second passing any particular point in the pipe. So the units of flow rate must be cubic meters per second. Okay, so now I'm going to look at these two locations in the pipe, and I have location one and location two. In location one, the diameter is large. Location two, the diameter is small. And all the continuity equation is saying is if this fluid is really incompressible, there better be exactly as much of it passing each point in the pipe per second. So the continuity equation is so simple if you write it in terms of flow rate. There it is, F1 equals F2. The flow rate at each point must be the same. But of course, we want to relate this to the speed of the fluid. And so to do that, I'm going to let a small amount of time go by. And we're just going to watch the fluid move forward at the surface A1. And we're going to watch the fluid move forward at the surface A2. And as it does that, it's going to trace out a cylinder. OK, so there's our cylinders of fluid that have been traced out during a time delta T. I'm going to go ahead and label this volume at point one a capital V. So don't confuse it with the fluid speed, but a capital V1. And this volume at point two has a capital V2. Okay, and then the displacement of that fluid at point one, I'm going to call delta X1. And the displacement of that fluid at point two, I'm going to call delta X2. And now I'm going to look at the flow rates and try to relate them to speed. So the flow rate at point one must be the volume passing that point, that's a capital V, over the time it took. But I can express that volume in terms of the cross-sectional area, A1, multiplied by the length of that cylinder, delta X1. And here's where I find my fluid speed. Delta X1 over delta T is just little V1. So the flow rate at that point is just the cross-sectional area multiplied by the speed at that point. Doing a similar calculation with point 2, I find V2 as delta X2 over delta T. And so the flow rate at point 2 is just cross-sectional area multiplied by speed. If I then say the flow rate has to be the same at each of these points in the pipe, I arrive at what people would normally call the continuity equation. And it's A1V1 equals A2V2. But it's also important not to forget that each of those expressions is equal to the flow rate in cubic meters per second through the pipe. Let's apply this to an example. So we have a flow rate through a hose of 0.3 liters per second. And the water is coming from a pipe of diameter 3 centimeters. But the hose has a diameter that's less than that. It's 2.5 centimeters. So I want to get the water speed in both parts. I'll just label those diameters real quick. Okay, so one thing has to be done sort of in advance here. I have a flow rate given in liters per second, and I need to convert units on that to get cubic meters per second. So for this, you have to remember that there's a 1,000 liters in a cubic meter, and I end up with 0 0.0003 cubic meters per second. Okay, then I can relate that flow rate to the speed at either location in the pipe here using F equals AV. So V1 is just going to be the flow rate in the proper units divided by A1. So I get 0 0.0003 cubic meters per second, all divided by the cross-sectional area of the pipe at point 1. Well, that cross-sectional area is going to be pi r squared, but I could just write... Just I'll do a little side note here. A1 equals 
by r1 squared, but I could write r1 as d over 2, so I have d1 over 2 all squared, and that allows me to directly use the numbers that I was given. When I square that, I get a 1 fourth pi d1 squared. So down here, I'm going to write, just so I don't have a complex fraction, I'm going to write 0.25 for 1 fourth times pi times diameter 1 squared. Diameter is 0 0.03 meters. And then I square that. Check out the units for a second. I have cubic meters per second in the numerator and meters squared in the denominator. Two factors of meters are going to cancel, leaving me with meters per second. So that's good. And I end up with 0 0.424 meters per second for the fluid speed at 0.1. Then I simply repeat the calculation for 0.2. The flow rate's the same there, so it's the same F. That's A2, V2. That means V2 is F over A2. And I do the same trick with using a diameter instead of a radius. So in the denominator, I've got 1 quarter pi times the new diameter in the proper units, 0 0.025 meters, all squared. And I end up with a fluid speed of 0 0.611 meters per second. So just a note on physical intuition here. We know that the fluid is nearly incompressible, so the same volume must flow by every point every time one second goes by. So of course, when I get into a skinnier pipe, the fluid speed has to be bigger in order to carry the same amount of volume in the same amount of time. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.